I'd like to thank the organizers of the Jasper High Art Event for inviting me to read my poems. I'm happy to be reading my work alongside Bob Guest's art. Like Bob, I also work on a mountain fire lookout in the summer. And I think we both share the experience of a sense of mystery as a result of wandering and living alone in the Rocky Mountains. So I'm going to read about eight poems, and these poems have been inspired by Bob Guest's artwork, and each title of the poem is taken from a title of uh, Bob's a, a painting by Bob Guest. This first poem is called Indian Graves Near Grand Cache, Moonlight. The leaning crosses in an old graveyard of three have no shadows. An iridescent magenta and blue night sky makes the spirit wander. The tall leafless tree has seen it all. First Nations people and buffalo coming and going, empty and full, like the poised moon. Warm grays, dappled pinks, a paradise to die for. Peaks peppered with snow mimic wood frame forms of spirit houses. Hanging fence railings, wood boards fragmenting over time. Dark, dark gaps peer through the walls. Is anybody home? Silence goes for an evening stroll. Humans and non-humans intermingle like secret lovers. Cloaked in diamonds of sparkling snow, moonlit voices whisper coded messages to the Rocky Mountains. Ancestors talk in acrylic dreams. Beauty seeks its own company. This poem is called Approaching Thunderstorm at Pierre Gray Lakes. You want to run, but the pale orange sky enchants you. You want to jump for joy, but the evergreens are sharp, thick, and dark as the black-bellied clouds. The lake mirrors the trembling sky in golden-brown lines. As you try to catch your breath, a slit of blended blue hits you in the mouth. It's much too late. Tortured faces emerge in water's gray shadows. You feel the dark edges of history. A terrific crash. Who's there? The clouds are rumbling. The hallowed colors are haunting. And you can't peel your eyes away. Soon the storm will snuff out what little tawny light remains. Run. Hurry. What's keeping you? The Forest Creek Fire from Copton Lookout. The smoke makes the mountains blue, but not sad. Lightning naturally lays bare the clothed earth and inscribes a story from 1961. Dark gray funnels of smoke redesign the sky. White cumulus clouds are eclipsed. Brown haze invades the horizon from unexpected directions. It's a jigsaw puzzle. A giant's face scrambled in cheeks of smoke. From this angle, the fire's mid-slope base is not visible. Rocks offer moss as sacrifice to the hungry rising flames. The sweating firefighters attacking the chaos from below cannot be seen. Slabs of ochre rocks and stunted evergreens wait calmly inner eyes turned upward. The stage belongs to the smoke, visible for thousands of miles, and then kilometers, and then decades. Viewed from the sky, gray appendages arise from a Monet lily pond to stroke undulating hills, disrobing from an ochre green blouse. Fire, ancient and organic, without additives, paints an original, pointillist landscape. Kakwa River under full moon. Stay away from the Kakwa River when the moon is full. Footloose predators sharpen their teeth 
in the trembling foliage. Buried pack horses and broken airplanes rise from the glowing hills. Somewhere a forest is burning. The orange smoke face of that unobstructed moonlight sends rabid wolves running away from the water. Even the hot shadows of spruce trees cannot stand still. Such a blistering haunting. But if your lips are parched, your weary body burning, and you can stand the brilliant torture of a starless sky, then cozy up to thirsty stones, drinking at the Kakwa gravel bar. Splash the wild horses, blowing steamy snorts. Holler like a rainbow trout, and drink the river's sweet salmon radiance. Forget all rhyme and reason, until your dry, sore throat can sing again. Alive at last, like a heavenly ghost. If you get lost, I'll find you in this moonlit river, imbibing in these gilded hills. Your lips, your tongue, and your longing quenched in this waterfall of light. Beaver Dam Creek along the eastern slopes. The sky can't make up its mind today. It's mostly engaged in gray debates. A winter watershed going nowhere. The distant mountains yawn and cover their faces with snow. Scattered spruce and pines raise their arms perfuming cool air with their sweat. The big bull moose skull is pleased to rest against a long log. His bones lap dance on the hill's hip. No grizzly bear nor great blooded hunter has won this big game. Now a quiet jeweler of white bracelets and rings in plein air. A nourishing field of whites and blacks a landscape of slow-release supplements for rodents and humans. A canvas of bleached antlers whose tips point skyward, inspiring angels to paint. Listen, the blasphemous bellows of a lordly moose, the cow's ears swinging to the rustic tune. The rocks, north face of Nose Mountain. My gray face is treacherous sometimes, sharp as a thin nose. Deep holes leading halfway to Earth's core are hidden by a white blush of snow. Pick your way carefully along my gritty edges. Don't step unannounced in grizzly dens. Surely this isn't a place for ATVs. Lean on the history of erratic rocks and divine their advice. Walk like a fat cloud. Leave offerings for the deer. Watch for the green crest of pines, the rattle of spruce trees, arms outstretched in a ripping southwest breeze. Take your time on the top of my skull. Rest gently on old knick-knick. Have some ju blue juniper berries. Wipe the sweat off your stony face. Brush back your brutal hair and drink up my favorite intoxicating view. This last poem is called Changing Weather. Like a loved one, the weather is always with us, but never the same. On a rocky ridge, there is warmth underfoot, light and dark oranges, browns. Blue shadows sparkle. These mountains are home echoing harmonic lines. Ghosts of fog blur one's vision, looking up. A cool dampness brushes alpine faces, fragrance of vanishing forms. Snow-capped peaks are erased, nothing to hold on to. I have seen changes in alpine weather permanently transform life. Time to cover up. Take a last quick glance with heightened senses and let ego's fear dissolve in the mist. May our final transition be as light as this weather's soft brush stroke.